Okay, let's have a look at an Alienware Dell R12 for deep learning. This is a computer that my father got. He is kind of a light gamer and he does just typical computer browsing and that sort of thing. This is about a $1,900 computer as configured. It has a 11th generation Intel i7 with eight cores, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a NVIDIA 3060 Ti. We'll look a little more closely at the specs in a moment, and I'll talk about how I might upgrade some of these and still stay relatively budget conscious or other things that you could add to this if you wanted to go more for deep learning. I'm not going to talk about this too much as a gaming computer because for one, I am not a gamer. Gamer <laughs> Games quite honestly give me motion sickness, the really good ones, so I somewhat stay clear of that whole genre of computing. I'm going to talk more about this for deep learning. The R12 is meant very much as a gamer's computer. It's Alienware. So we're going to look at what a relatively budget computer, not so much budget, this is certainly mid-range perhaps of what you would spend, but rather than looking at really high-end hardware like I've looked at recently, what can you do with that NVIDIA 3060 Ti that has eight gigabytes of GPU RAM. We're gonna look at some things like training GANs on it. We're going to look at benchmarking it versus more advanced GPUs, what that would look like. And I'm gonna just do a couple of videos looking at what you would do more with a entry level GPU that doesn't have a massive amount of GPU RAM available to you. So let's go ahead and unbox this machine. I'm not going to do too much on unboxing. There's plenty of unboxings of Alienware. Alienware does have some high-end keyboards. This is not one of them. This is the base model Dell keyboard. Also your basic Dell mouse. And there it is. Flip this up. Okay, it is Alienware, so it's got to look like something that the, the US Air Force ripped off of a alien spacecraft, naturally. Oh wait, actually, this is the front of it. Very nice looking machine, really, overall. The back of these is sometimes more important than the front. All right, let's get this thing powered up and see what it can do. I'm going to start by comparing the GPU. So this computer that I'm working on here has a 3060 Ti. The Ti's, I believe that stands for titanium, is usually the more fast, more advanced of the GPUs. So it is good for this computer that I have a 3060 Ti that gives me the eight gigabytes of RAM. Now the 3060, which was introduced fairly recently, has 12 gigabytes of RAM, but it has fewer cores, but faster per core. So this would pretty much require me to have both of these here to actually benchmark them head to head. Offhand, if I was going to buy one, I would go for the 3060 because that 12 gigabytes of RAM is very, very useful for deep learning. Now on the higher end, the 3090, 80, these, you can see there's considerably more tensor cores, so they're going to be considerably faster. And you've got the 24 gigabyte and 12 gigabyte. So it's got the 3060 Ti, it's got a really a decent number of tensor cores, and we're going to see how fast this machine really is in a moment. The 8 gigabytes of RAM is what's going to be your limiting factor. Now, you will run into some issues out of the box with 8 gigabytes, but if you adjust settings, particularly batch sizes and other things, you can really do a lot with this machine. Um, actually, 
really impressed with it. And it looks to me like a pretty good machine if you don't necessarily have the budget to go into the higher range and you want a good gaming computer, now look at the other YouTube videos that'll tell you how good of a gaming computer this is. That's not my area of expertise. But we'll take it through some deep learning benchmarks and see really what it can do. So I'm going to go right into the Anaconda prompt. And I already set this machine up off camera with all the CUDA drivers, CUDA DNN, all that sort of thing. We're going to do a TensorFlow benchmark, but I'm going to also do some PyTorch with it in another video. So I'm going to just launch Jupyter Notebook. This is a benchmark that I used, that I created. It uses the cats and dogs Kaggle data set. And I really designed it to test dual GPUs and to benchmark those. Let's go ahead and run it. The last time I ran it, TensorFlow was on 2.2. So we should see a update there. Now the fan on this machine, and it's sitting right, right next to me, does make a decent amount of noise, as would be expected on this, this type of machine. If I run my decibel checker, you can probably see it here. We're at about 54 decibels, which is, we're primarily hearing system fan. The GPU has not kicked in yet. So let's go ahead and run this part. This is showing me the devices that I can, I have here. You can see that I have an RTX 3060 Ti, like I mentioned. It's showing less memory here than the specs. It's just all a matter of how you measure that. This is using the 1024 divisions, I believe. Notice here, this is the batch size that I specify, and we are going to make use of... Okay, this block here is really just dividing up the data. Now, this is important to remember if you go into a multi-GPU system. Two GPUs with 8 gigabytes of RAM, it's not really like you have 16 gigabytes of RAM now, unless you are splitting that entire neural network across those two GPUs, so that the first layers are on one, the next layers are on the other. That's not that common. Usually you're parallelizing the data so that the additional GPUs are handling parts of your batch because you can really throw large numbers of GPUs at this if you start to use something like Horovod. But here we're just using one GPU on this machine. I'm going to stick to the batch size of 32, which is what I did this benchmark on. Notice we're using Inception ResNet V2. So this is a decent sized neural network. I'm throwing a fair amount at this and I don't know how well this is going to necessarily work with that smaller amount of RAM, but let's see. So now let's run it again. You can probably see some output here. And if you run into GPU issues, this tells you a whole lot as far as what's going wrong. I can certainly hear the GPU starting to spin up, the fan anyway. This all looks good, loaded QDNN. Ah, uh, we're hitting memory. This that you see here usually will crash it. Ran out of memory. It's, it's telling me that things would be better, better performance with more memory, but it did actually crash. So here, you'll see the resource uh, exhausted, I think it says. I've seen this many, many times. No matter how big of a GPU I have, I will <laughs> always exhaust it trying to do more than I should. Yeah, resource exhausted, out of memory, OOM. This is often the bane of my existence. If you have this GPU, the 3060, you're probably sad at this point thinking, okay, it's just too big for my GPU. Usually not the case. What you've got to do in this case, and I'll cover this in this video because this is important if you're using a 3060 Ti. You need to look at, first of all, maybe you would want to use a smaller neural network than ResNet V2. So you're going to have to change things. That's just part of getting deep learning to work on this sort of a GPU. And if you're doing PyTorch, similar concept. You're going to need to scale things back. 
do you use PyTorch? Would you like to see what the 3060 can do on PyTorch with this exact same sort of situation? Let me know in the comments. But we're going to go up here and I'm gonna just have that. That's possibly being optimistic. I really would like to decrease the batch size first and then the neural network because I'm still keeping this problem similar to what I had. So let's go ahead and run this again. And by the way, you can see some of the times that I have here on other GPUs. Now, I can't quite put the time that I'm going to eventually get on this if I do successfully get this to work on the 3060 Ti because I've changed the batch size. So I've somewhat changed the problem. But let's see if it will actually start this doesn't matter. The assert cardinality is not handled by... That's just the parallelization code that I have in there. This is designed to work on multiple GPU if needed. Up to eight, really. It doesn't parallelize across multiple. You'd use Horovod to do that. Multiple computers. We're seeing some indication of performance gains. So see, it's complaining that more memory would make this run faster, but it didn't blow up. So that's awesome. Because here you can see that it's running. So it's running my first epoch. I mean, this is awesome. We have this running on a 3060 Ti, which is great. You can see I've ran it on considerably larger. Most of these have 16 GBs at least. But it's running across. Its accuracy will get a lot better. It's going up. I don't really have too much concerns about accuracy on this. It's cranking along pretty fast, relatively speaking. So it's 22 minutes is the estimated time for this first epoch. So multiply that by about five, and that's how it's going to finish. And you can see how it compares here. So 110, if I just do a quick multiplication on this, about two hours. And remember too, these are mostly server class GPUs that I have listed and dual GPU systems in the case of there that I got it down to 15 minutes. So I'm really pretty happy with this GPU. So if I was going to take this computer to another level, most of these processors that they're offering are right around eight core. I'm not necessarily going to spend the extra $400 to, to get the i9. I might like to get to the i9 just so that I have the latest, but most of the work is going to be done on GPUs with the type of software that I'm working on. I have often launched Amazon Cloud instances and beat the heck out of the GPUs, multiple GPUs, and my CPUs are sitting idle. I would not initially upgrade that. The graphics card, this is what I would think about upgrading. That 3090 is expensive. If I could swing the 1200, I would absolutely do this. I would not do anything that's not NVIDIA because it's just not going to work that well with, you'd need OpenCL instead of CUDA, which just does not have the support on things like PyTorch and TensorFlow, at least currently. I would not get the 20 series. I, at this point, I would really like to get the 30 series, so I have Ampere. I would think very much about this 3070 with eight or this 3080 with 10 would be just about ideal. So I would probably put it in that range. The monitors, that just depends. I'm using my previous monitor that I owned. Memory, I like lots of memory. If this was a computer I was building for my own use, I would probably get 128 gig. I like RAM. And I always like to have at least twice, if not three times, the amount of RAM that I do of GPU. So that's what I would consider there. Hard drive just all depends on what you want to put into this. How much data you want to keep on it and staged. These are M2s, so that is certainly good. Hard disk access is usually not a bottleneck for me for the way that I'm creating the software to run on the GPUs. What's going to happen, the way I set things up typically, is I'll be bringing the data in from the hard drive, but it's going to then go crank on it with the GPUs for a couple of hours. So if it takes 
30 seconds or even two minutes to load that data, it doesn't necessarily matter to me. This kind of computer is going to be right around $2,300. If you go back to the GPU and you just go nuts with the 3090, assuming they can get you one, the price is going to be right around three. Now, one thing I have noticed while it has been difficult to get the GPUs as parts for building your own system, for getting these as system components on a machine from a manufacturer tends to be much, much easier right now. And they're saying I could have it by Monday, July 12th, which is really a couple of weeks from now. This machine, I was hoping to get it by Father's Day, a US holiday, and it actually took Dell half the amount of time that they initially estimated to get it to me. So I was quite happy with Dell in this one. Overall, this machine, I'm extremely happy with it. It's very fast, very responsive. I'll probably edit the video for this as well and Camtasia on it. And it seems like it would be entirely capable of doing that. It's done quite well on a couple of the deep learning processes that I've done on it. GANs might be interesting. You'd probably have to scale back, definitely on your batch size, probably on your resolution. Would you like to see me do some NVIDIA style GAN on this? Let me know. I can definitely try that. Are there other things you'd like to, me, to see me try on this computer before I give it to my dad? Let me know. All right. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to see more with GPUs, deep learning, artificial intelligence, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. Talk to you later.